Welcome back to the Aracopia Show. Today I'm going to talk about what industry you should be in or what to do about what's coming. Now, just to set the precedent, if you aren't aware of my mentality of what is what is preparedness, what is SHTF um, and things, and my perspective is it's just life. Like things could happen catastrophically, minorly. You could just lose your job. You could just, you know, be affected by higher interest rates. You could, inflation could be taking you out or it could be a nuclear, you know, winter or something. And, you know, as a preparedness minded person, you kind of just prepare for everything. It's just life. But what industry should you be in and what should you do? So unfortunately, we are all in this together. And there's not really anywhere to hide for the most part. So for, well, there is, or maybe you'll take something out of this video of what you can do about it. But um, number one is being self-sufficient, self-reliant, and frugal. So looking after yourself, producing, you know, start a garden if you haven't. Um, find a local meat source right off of a farmer, save a few bucks and get better quality food, um, do things for yourself, uh, being frugal, build a better building, add insulation to your attic, uh, put a little wood stove in your house, um, things like that. And saving money is like better than making money. I did a whole podcast on just that, but self-reliant is number one, um, this podcast isn't so much about that, but another thing with, with what I see coming is there's nothing to invest in. So, um, again, what I see going forward and what I'm talking about today, what industry you should be in, what you should do for a living, what you should do for work, what career you should be in. Um, I see two outcomes of this is the, the fed and the government takes the responsible route and deflates the biggest almost everything bubble in human history and we have a depression in the west like nobody can even fathom how bad that's going to be and that would actually fix the problem and on the other hand super high inflation possibly even hyperinflation so and i don't see an in-between we're going in one of those directions um and they're currently at the end of september 2022 they're kind of deciding which way they're going to go so um i guess just briefly the economics of it we have about a negative five percent real interest rate so the the fed in the in the usa just is raising interest rates and everybody's talking how hawkish they are how how they're fighting inflation well inflation minus the interest rates that they currently raise to gives it an, about a negative 5% interest rate, real interest rate. So they're not hawkish. They're not fighting inflation. Um, they are creating inflation. So the responsible thing to do is raise interest rates above inflation, but that collapses everything. Uh, I still believe what they're going to do is kind of fake like they're fighting inflation. And then they're going to, when everybody complains in the democracy that we have, they're going to reverse course and we're going to have high inflation. But anyways, the, what I'm talking about today, uh, the industry and career and what you should do about it is good for both scenarios. And um, I'll explain that. So whether it's hyperinflation or the worst depression you've ever seen, this advice is for both of those. So there's nowhere to, nowhere to hide you know, very little places to hide with your investments. Um, you know, lots of people out of work, the private sector killed, even the government will reduce, hopefully, uh, reduce their public sector force. So it's less of a burden on the, the taxpayer and less of a burden for inflation. But um, if you are in the government, and I'll keep my opinions out of it past this, but if you have a government job, if you're lucky enough to be one of the elites of society that's taxpayer funded, that is a job that's um, very good to have, right? Because the government, it's not like a private company. They, you know, instead of 
filing for bankruptcy, they have an unlimited amount of money because the government just prints money and then can do that. So you're safer in the system that we have with a public sector job, right? Because it doesn't operate like a, a free comp free market company or private company. Um, on the other hand, we're so far into this that a lot of private companies, their customers are high paid government workers. So it's kind of a kind of a funny thing there. If government gets cut, which is responsible, it, the responsible way to do it, then it's going to hurt the private sector. There's going to be less homes being built. There's going to be less people going to restaurants. If you're in any sort of real estate or real estate in general, this affects for both hyperinflation and Great Depression. doesn't matter if real estate's going to hyperinflate or go down. Less people are going to be buying homes, have the ability to buy homes because less people are going to have money either from hyperinflation or Great Depression. Uh, home builders, not going to be much homes being built. So I kind of am looking at the price of building material, where at least where I live. Where I live, real estate's not in a hyper bubble. It's kind of my province is kind of this flyover province that's kind of beats by its own drum and isn't affected by <laughs> too many things, which is kind of nice in, in a way. It's slow moving here, whatever. It doesn't matter if real estate hyperinflates or it's the Great Depression, less homes are going to be built. So if you are a home builder or a tradesperson, so if you're an electrician and you do jobs for home builders, do the, you know, sparky work or you're a plumber or gas fitter and you do new homes and new construction and things, that's going to stop. The price of building material is probably above what a darn house is worth finished right now. And if it's hyperinflation, uh, less people are going to have money to buy homes. If it's higher interest rates, less people are going to have money to buy homes, drive real estate down. If it's Great Depression, so that's high interest rates. And again, nobody has money to buy homes. So new home construction is going to tank. Nobody's going to build that. Now, where I am from, most people are tradespeople right? And real estate and building houses is kind of a service sector, right? You're building something. It doesn't really produce any value other than a place for somebody to lay their head. Like it doesn't produce anything. It's kind of like building something that's a consumer item, I guess. But here's some advice. If you're in new home construction, if you're, let's say, a carpenter, you switch gears and everyone all the time is going to need minor home repairs. If something breaks and it needs fixing, oh, kids threw a baseball through the window. Let's, you can go just board it up for them properly, or you can replace the window. And getting into the absolute essential maintenance things, and um, that's easier for a carpenter handyman, not so easy for an electrician because there won't be much new home construction or renovations. Plumber is a little bit better, but instead of doing new home construction plumbing and new commercial plumbing and things, um, you should be rotor rooting. Hey, I plug the, the poop pipe again. Uh, so who are you going to call? The maintenance plumber, right? Or I need some little plumbing thing done. And what you better be is the best handyman, the best plumber, the best electrician for the best price and be willing to do the small, small tasks and switch to maintenance mode. So that is my advice for all of the tradespeople, which is a huge portion of the workforce. Real estate agents, <clears throat> so less houses being built and less houses changing hands. Nobody can afford to buy a house, whether it's hyperinflation or extreme depression. Um, there's going to be less houses being sold. So possibly that's not a good thing to get into being the middleman for transactions between buyer and seller. Bankers. Uh, bankers are the best banks that we have in Canada are online banks. 
Uh, lots of bank branches aren't even open anymore. Uh, banks don't even have cash in them. I always joked that <clears throat> way back when they'd hire one of the bank tellers to greet you at one of the larger banks when you walk in. Hey, is there, what are you in or doing today? Or is there, did you know you can do that online? Can I show you how to help you do that online? Oh, you can do that at the automated teller machine. And they'd have a person there like hired to, to convince you that they, they don't need a job that. <laughs> so, uh, just with automation and things and, uh, it's all online banking. There's no branches barely open. It's completely useless uh, if you're a bank teller or something. Poor industry, you're not going to have a job. The low-end jobs and the service jobs, like maybe a fast food restaurant, things like that. So just with the inflation, businesses trying to figure out how to cut costs so they keep the best employees and get rid of the lower-end workforce and switch to automated automated burger flippers, robotics, automated order takers. Um, you can see this happening already, but it's going to get worse. So whether it's extreme high inflation or depression, like, <clears throat> so I, if, if I happen to own a restaurant or a fast food restaurant or a McDonald's or something, and I'm worried, well, oh, geez, the patties, the beef patties are going way up, or it's the Great Depression and geez, we're losing customers, we have to, you know, maybe we have to try to reduce prices. Uh, in both instances, I would try to be more efficient. So automated tellers, automated burger flipping. In fact, I'm going to give you one heck of an entrepreneurial idea. So there's things called food trucks and, and people will get a license and, you know, set up a grill or whatever and a re refrigeration and a generator and do a food truck system what somebody should do is a brand a really catchy name like trailer park boys <laughs> comes to mind where uh what's his face the guy with the great big belly wanted to be a business owner so he created the dirty burger and it was just with his barbecue but uh you could do a food truck so it's you don't have high uh, fixed costs like real estate property tax. Come up with a deal to, to rent a big portion of an empty parking lot in the gr Great Depression or hyperinflation. And you call it, maybe call it the Dirty Burger. And it's a food truck, but set up pylons and a drive through thing. Have a little automated screen. Somebody comes in. What do you want? Coffee. You have like minimal choices and burger and make burgers like like if a burger at McDonald's is six dollars now or something you make your burgers for three dollars and you can have one or two people in this big food truck and and only have a limited menu item with no huge costs like property tax just give rent a parking lot spot or something uh, do it off grid ish um, so bring in propane generator so you can get away from those government things and, you know, color the food truck, brand it and <clears throat> call it the dirty burger maybe, and just sell people burgers. It's not like hold the pickles. It's like, no, you just get a burger, like just a burger and you want a coffee. It's like we have one size or something and it's a dollar, right? You go to Tim Hortons in Canada now at extra large coffee's three dollars it's insane now yours wouldn't be high high quality you could do instant coffee um but when the general public the majority at large has much less money from either again super high inflation or great depression they are going to come to you so they'll get used to the cheap coffee they'll learn to enjoy the dirty burger right and um you undercut the even McDonald's and you could franchise that you could build out trucks and you could spread them out all over the city and rent vacant parking lots because they will be vacant in super high inflation. Like all the malls are dead. So if you own a, own a mall or have a business in a mall, those are dead. Brick and mortar is dead. Just rent the parking lot for whatever here. Have 
whatever, 20 bucks a day or whatever, 50 bucks a day or whatever it is. That's a one heck of a good idea. So I, I think about people hurting like the general public and, um, you know, are, do people eat, are they going to want like lettuce off of a farm out of town? How are you going to get them the lettuce? You know, they want a finished thing that's cheap for their convenience. Like in the pandemic, uh, fast food restaurants and the corporate fast food just skyrocketed like pe more people went there so they could sit in their car and get their food without going into places or whatever it is um, right now if you have a great little Vietnamese restaurant or something and you can get lunch for cheaper than a fast food crummy little burger and a pop you can get like a home cooked meal that fills you up is good for you and things. And it's even cheaper than fast food. People don't go there. Those businesses are struggling because people want drive through things and fast and lower cost, especially moving forward. So even preparedness stores and the preparedness industry are going to have trouble because again, preparedness is for before things happen it's not called a reaction store. So if people are selling like survival bows and tents and things and things, I think they're going to have a lot less sales actually moving forward. Now with me, I have, you know, my freeze dried food products and, um, you know, they're, they're comparable price to a, a decent quality smoothie, like a, a booster juice type where like, same price range for that, but I don't have a whole bunch of overhead. So I suspect it doesn't matter what industry you're in, even if it's in f the food industry, uh, everyone is going to have less sales because it's going to be a higher price. And if it's a depression, everyone's also going to have less sales, even on the essential things that you need. But preparedness store, when you get right down to it, when things people... The majority of people have a harder and harder time, like Great Depression or hyperinflation. They're not going to have disposable income. They're not going to buy a super expensive, the ultimate backpack. They're not going to buy bulletproof vests. They're not going to buy maybe even freeze-dried food. Um, they're going to look for the dirty burger, the cheapest possible food that they can get. So even in the food industry, already in grocery stores, the cheaper no-name and store brand products people are switching to. This has been in the news for a while now. So the food industry, if, if you're selling a healthier, high-end food product, uh, you're going to have trouble because people don't have the money in inflation or depression to buy that. They're going to go to the cheapest possible food option that's good enough to satisfy their you know, sugar craving or whatever it is. And so if you're in the food industry, you want the cheapest, cheapest product that you can get, I guess. So uh, I often thought mine I kept, it's just pure whole fruit in our smoothies and nothing else. But it, it crossed my mind to add some powdered rice fillers and things that all these other companies do so that people feel like they're getting my products less expensive and they get more it's just a psychology thing but so far i'm still just sticking to you no know, just pure whole raw fruit healthy for you you know whatever don't like it don't buy it um dentists and doctors and things there's always going to be a need for health care but uh like in in Canada, we have quote unquote free health care. So if there's a problem, it's all covered by the taxpayers. Uh, so people take advantage of that. But in places like the the states and other places that have a better health care system, or Mexico or something, like um, <clears throat> the, I, a lot many Canadians they go for the, to Mexico for their health care because they actually get health care when they need it, and it's better and it's cheaper. Um, then Canada socialized healthcare doesn't work. So, but you better be just like everything else, the best dentist for the best price and the best doctor for the best price, because people 
even though they, you know, if they chip a tooth, they're not going to get it, pay to get it fixed. If they have a little cough and it costs to go to the doctor, they're not going to go to the doctor. But there's always going to be a need for health care, so that's something that people need. And again, go back to the essentials, food, water, shelter, security. If you're a middleman or an middleman or an investment broker or an investment advisor or a financial planner, um, you, again, it d doesn't matter if it's hyperinflation or depression. It's the same thing. People are going to have less money in general, the general public, less money to invest. Uh, there's less places to make money. So you're going to have less clients with less money and um, you're going to go down as well. But again, be the best in your industry for the cheapest price and you'll be okay. I'd still recommend maybe a different industry, but um, yeah. Retail stores. <clears throat> so in the worst pandemic in the history of humanity uh, in 2020, what went up in value is hot tubs, cars. You couldn't get a new car. And there, some of that was supply chain chip shortages or some, some stuff too. But everybody was flushed with this free gimme's money, so inflation from the government. And um, and they didn't have to go to work. They could stay home. They had less money, more freedom, more time. So uh, hot tubs, you couldn't get a hot tub, and they were super expensive. Uh, exercise equipment, non-existent, sold out, super high prices. Uh, people... Uh, in the worst pandemic, we're buying building material for little projects, like I'm going to build a gazebo or a deck. And that isn't what I thought would happen. I thought people would be smarter than that. It's like, I got to buy storable food. Like, this is bad. It's like, no, no, no. Invest in Tesla with my Robinhood account and Arc Innovations and other tech companies and other stupid things and hot tubs and cars, both new and used. People were flushed with money. It's like more money, no work or less work. And uh, so that happened. I didn't uh, expect that. But now with what's coming in the future, when this actually comes to fruition and gets slowly worse, uh, <clears throat> you don't want to be a hot tub salesman. Nobody's going to be buying a hot tub. It's going to be expensive to run a hot tub. Nobody has disposable income for a hot tub. Golf carts. Nobody's going to be buying a golf cart. Nobody has disposable income to buy a golf cart. Quads, sleds, speedboats, sports cars, uh, luxury items of any kind. No, no, that's going down. Jewelry stores, anything you see in the mall, uh, brand name clothing stores. If you're in the retail industry, that is going away. Uh, imports and exports are going to go down as well. Uh, so people just have less money. So right now, like in the worst pandemic in history, there was supply chain shortages because the, the government, uh, with flushing people with the inflation, the free currency, geez, I should have got some of that. I should have jumped on the, cause I'm a loser for not doing that. But anyways, uh, the demand went way up. Everybody had more money, uh, and the supply went down or it stayed the same. So there's supply shortages because the, the manipulation from the money printing essentially and, and distributing the, uh, the currency created more demand. So, uh, stores would shipping went up 1400% or something like that for sea shipping because everything comes from overseas because we don't manufacture anything in Canada and the U.S. But I did not see that coming. So so there's companies, well, we got all this demand, so uh, let's just order a whole bunch more inventory and stuff and pay the extra shipping and pay way too much for shipping and the product, get it done and get it here. And then uh, we get more into this, are we going into depression or inflation and things are getting worse and the uh, so like right now, the, the government stopped the stimmies or some of the stimmies. They're still like 
like spending more money than last year and everything. That's just how this Ponzi scheme works. But uh, people aren't getting the actual free cash that's in their bank account for them to buy. It's just like forgiving student loans. So that's inflation. And um, but people aren't flushed with this free cash. Um, people are having to start paying their rents. They didn't even have to pay their rents uh, during the pandemic, leaving landlords short. But all the tenants, the majority of the public, they went out and bought toys, right? But now big companies like Target and Walmart and stuff are canceling orders. So all of a sudden we went from all the ships are full, we can't get a ship to put the product on, shipping's up 1,400% to the seas are empty. All the seas are, are empty ships because the demand destruction from inflation or depression, like whichever way the, the Fed chooses. And I think it's going to be like hyperinflation or super high inflation. But anyways, import exports going to go down as well. So some industries that are probably good to be in. So I said, you know, the preparedness type stores. Uh, so the high-end backpacks, the high-end tents, the high-end cots, the stuff like that. But a few things that might sell would be a solar generator, a gas generator. When people like their utilities get cut off because it's too expensive or it's a depression and they can't afford it as well. Solar panels, that might be a good uh, digging wells for people that decided to leave the city and do what I'm doing when it might be too late. Um, maybe even some construction, like alternative construction, like maybe somebody needs a, instead of building a house, maybe you build these 8 by 12 little dinky cabins that somebody can put in someone else's backyard or maybe renovating large houses to uh, better accommodate as room rentals moving forward. So another thing, just yeah, back to alternative real estate. I, I mentioned a few times before that people in the West are spoiled because we need to produce if we want to consume, but people living in these McMansions, so... All these big houses, something's going to have to be done with those big houses. So maybe if somebody owns a house, they move their parents in or extended family in. So more people living in that house to share the costs. Uh, also, some of these big houses will be turned into room rentals. So people hurting, they can't afford an apartment themselves, so they get a roommate. And then just them and their roommate can, can't afford it either, so then they bring in two more roommates and... You know, maybe everybody gets their own room for a bit and then it turns into every room has a bunk bed and then every room has two bunk beds in. So if you have or are in real estate and want to, you know, be ahead of the curve for the future rental market in either high inflation or depression, it doesn't matter. Uh, room rentals are, so you're offering somebody a place that they're not going to freeze for the cheapest rent that they can possibly get, right? And this will be hard with uh, with government because government doesn't want people to be able to afford to live for cheaply. You know, you can't put a second kitchen in your house. Uh, your boomer neighbors are going to complain uh, that have maybe a big government pension that complain that their neighborhood's changing or there's more cars parked on the street and send the government at you and the government will come in and say, oh, no, you, you're you over uh, capacity. And then you have to kick people out to create the homeless problem more. But you can think about that. Uh, I actually years ago thought this was a good idea if I wanted to be back in real estate on a single family uh, lot. So just zoned, I think it's R1 or R2, I drew a great big house and it was long and skinny. So it had a hallway in the middle and rooms on both sides. Uh, I think it was two or four bathrooms and then a massive, because you're only allowed one kitchen with the government, a great big kitchen, but it had like three fridges, two stoves, a big work area. So it's a shared kitchen bathrooms shared bathrooms and then a lot of rooms and it's still a single family house but 
it's a single family house that you can rent out rooms in. And I thought that was a way around government rules. And that would be one heck of a good rental property moving forward. Uh, other industries, yeah, well digging, anything to do with homesteading, self-reliance, trenching, food producer. So farmer just producing cheap raw food. So getting into chickens and eggs and meat chickens and ca cattle and livestock and goats and vegetables and things. So for us, we tried the fresh cut flower farming and uh, that went pretty, pretty well. Like my wife sold very, very nice bouquets for a very, very reasonable price for what they are. And she did okay with that, but moving forward, people aren't going to be spending a ton on flowers. Uh, they're going to be sp need to spend the money on food, right? So being a food producer, so here's the raw cow and then a chunk of meat, and it's this much a pound, right? There's a lot of farmers that complain about that they don't get the full price of beef or whatever, or whatever they're raising. So they'll like stick cows in a field they'll make sure the fence is okay make sure the cow has water and enough pasture land and then feed it hay and they'll be complained that they just get a lower price per live pound for their cow and that the markups all in the butcher shop and the processing facility and the packaging and then they're pissed off with that another good industry would be a butcher shop because lots of like it's easy to raise livestock. The hard part and the work is the processing and all that stuff and packaging. So a good thing would be a butcher shop or a small processing facility, just a small local off of your farm, get it all food graded and stuff and um, nice and clean, a little walk-in cooler, the ability to process game and livestock for people like per pound um, just to do that work. So that's going to be a good uh, industry. That might be something to think about. A few things that did really well in the Great Depression in the 30s was like people didn't have money for luxuries, but they could spend money to, to like get a little bit of enjoyment out of life. One thing that did really good was candy stores in the Great Depression. So people could take their kids there and everybody's suffering it's not a very good life but you know for for a few pennies they could have a little sweet treat or something that's something to think about maybe a i don't know some sort of discount really cheap enjoyment thing for people to do uh either as adults or mostly for their kids you can you can think about uh think about that the options are endless but don't make it high end. It's more about the low cost. Even gold and silver moving forward. So I I don't really second guess myself with gold and silver because I know the fundamentals and the laws of economics are just like the laws of gravity. If you hold a beach ball at the bottom of a pool, if you force it down there, eventually it has to come up to the surface. If you shoot a slingshot a rock into the air it goes up and up and up and up and up and then it has to come down right it's just like gravity but gold and silver so it essentially the our entire economy is an everything bubble except for gold and especially silver so with that in mind as hyperinflation or super high inflation is the thing which i think it's going to be then gold and silver are going to take off when the general normie public figures out like that that's like their only option to save themselves is having real money so when the flood of people come in there it the price is going to skyrocket and in a great depression though you know maybe not so much but also in both cases uh gold and i guess silver is used in industry as well as it being money you have to think what it's used for electric vehicles um uh, healthcare, solar panels, uh, things like that. So is the production of electric vehicles going to come down? Yes, I think so. Is the production of solar panels going to come down? I actually, it's probably going to be less demand in 
because it's going to be so expensive in inflation and in depression, people have less money. So both times they buy less of doesn't matter what it is, even food there, people are going to buy less food as well. But as a monetary, as the two monetary metals, when people figure this out, I still think it's a good investment. Like, I guess it's, it was better to hold cash in the last few years than precious metals, even though the value of your cash goes down 8% a year or whatever, but uh, it would have been better to have cash to deploy. And that might be something to think about as well, is having some cash aside to deploy if it is a depressionary thing. But if it is the inflation route, which I think is it's going to be, they're not going to let allow uh, an extreme depression because there's too many general public people complaining, government do something, government is going to choose inflation, that is almost inevitable. I don't think they're going to do the right thing and allow a great depression, allow the bubbles to pop, allow the amount of suffering that that's going to bring. They're going to allow the suffering from super high inflation because it's less suffering and it's actually better for the government. But in that case, gold and silver and anything related to that, like miners is probably, probably a good investment. But again, have things in your personal possession is very, very, very important. Maybe it gives you less return if you have it in your personal possession, but it's much less risk. Having gold and silver and uh, is the only thing you can have that doesn't have counterparty risk is having it in your physical possession. So that's being personally responsible. You have to protect it. You have to store it. You have to look after it. Yeah, so hopefully I covered a lot of stuff for you to think about. But whatever industry you are in, whatever career you have, really take note. I mean, I used to build houses and in construction. And boy, am I glad that I have those skills that I was able to deploy for my own, own homesteading and build my own house and shop and I can build anything, right? I, I take that for granted because, you know, lots of people can't do that. Learn how to change your own oil. Learn how to do maintenance on your car. You know, what YouTube's a, incredible resources for that. There's every how-to mechanics videos on, on there. Learn the skill. You'll appreciate it instead of paying a mechanic. A mechanic's another, you know, good industry because nobody's going to be buying new cars. They're going to have older cars moving forward so either inflation or depression so if they have older cars those are going to require maintenance like today people just lease on credit a new car so that they don't have to do maintenance but moving forward they're not going to be able to get that credit going to lease or finance a new car uh, less new cars being built a mechanic would be a good industry to be in so having those skills but I mean, you know, maybe I'll leave it at that because it's like I'm trying to cover every industry and the entire economy. <laughs> it's just, it's I can't. So, yeah, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what your career you're in. Let me know if you're actively making changes to switch careers so that you're more resilient for what's coming in the future. And thanks for listening. We will see you next time.